I was going to show up something here. Hopefully you can see this. Can you see that? See what it says, let there be living light. Where you see the black triangle on the left. Peace in the middle. And then white on the right. Now if you put that together, you'll see uh, how an hourglass works. And they call that the shifting sands of time which are the shifting frequencies between both. Peace, love, harmony, balance between the two. And below that, I show the little spirals, which is the Merkaba, where you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six triangles, okay? When you add up the angle angles in each one of those, and you begin to realize the... Uh, the 369 and how that works with the 152 Gregorian chants, which are the natural harmonics that come from the source from which we experience the peace, love, the harmony, and balance within our own Merkaba, within our own physical body. So the temple of light, which runs up our spine, if you will, to the crown chakra, okay, is the love and the light that we use using the heart wheel to spin the speed in which all that love and all that light is being experienced throughout all of the major battery packs and the organs in our physical body, which is all high speed, high frequency energy, which means all 57 trillion of our cells are running on uh, minus 25 millivolts of electrical power that powers the magnetic light amplifier in all of our cells to experience love, joy, and happiness. So knowing how to manage our Merkaba and our energy field in the face of a distorted energy field when we come in here, when we have an interface with something that represents a corporation, and all the corporations that were set up here on the planet through the Roman Empire, okay? Um, and naturally, when you look at the nature of the seven seconds, the seven, remember the six was concerned about the seven because it ate nine, okay? <laughs> you cannot make this up because it's in everybody's face. But what we're talking about is the balance of the energy between dark and light. The energy that you don't see and the energy that you do see. So when you're running a high-speed Merkaba, you can see the light in front of you. Okay? Because everything is held within the light that we experience. So the faster that we're spinning and rotating in the angular spin of the particle is what allows us... To our state of consciousness to move holographically using our creative imagination in which we do it with because the speed at which our consciousness is experiencing who we are as a soul and living spirit that is in that light is moving so fast that it's like, phew, you're gone. And that's why for me, uh, it's difficult for me to handle something at this density this physical density in a dimension like this because I'm normally accustomed in spirit to moving so fast that there isn't anything that is... Uh... Well, how do I put this? It's, it's like having a, a built-in tack where the speed at which you are normally accustomed to experiencing the cosmos okay, is a speed that I noticed as a child, for example, that is moving so fast that it doesn't want anything that is external to it to slow itself down because that creates what? Drag. So the physical body I recognize has got too much drag. It's slowing me, it's slowing me down. Which just means we're not used to this density because it's just too slow. So this is how 
our state of consciousness and living spirit because we're normally accustomed to moving so fast is what allows us to collect so much data so fast. And that's what time vectoring all the data is, which represents all the different timelines in which a state of consciousness is experiencing the lower frequency density algorithms that are represented by the lower frequency density by those algorithms. So what that means is, is that, and naturally I get a pop-up trying to, to dis, uh, distract me, and naturally it's all the this, this stuff from uh, need money. It, it, I get tons of pop-ups from President Trump, President Trump, President Trump, President Trump. And if you don't understand how this works, I'll show you how he works. When you get a pop-up that says President Trump, and then I acknowledge that, then I'm giving President Trump energy. That means that President Trump now has an enormous amount of energy. I don't do that. I don't give any of my energy away other than the natural way in which I broadcast it wherever I go. But I don't assign it to a particular unit of energy unless they need to heal. But what I will do is I will use it to, 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 to transfer, if you will, because I know how to do this, okay, is to transfer energetically because we're all connected in the light. So I know how to send my energy, my higher frequency love energy and light energy to another unit of energy or another unit of consciousness because the morphogenetic field structure through which <clears throat> is essentially the communication grid that we're all connected to allows us to communicate in spirit the energy that we are to another unit of energy which is living spirit. So that's how we do that. Okay? Uh, and you can means test it. That's, that's commensurate with all the work that Rupert Sheldrake did, okay, in the morbid genetic field structure. But naturally, as I mentioned before, there are a lot of units of consciousness that are here, <coughs> excuse me, that are not homo sentient sapien, which means they're not native to this planet. That's why we have the peace treaties that are set up between the different native tribes and clans that are here, they were set up between the clan mothers in which we have those treaties. And then you have everybody else that comes in here that come from other star systems. As I remember, there's 246 different races. And this is where you get into the core frequency identity of who you are. Okay, it's based on the spin of your Merkaba. That's why this is in some ways... Um, when you look at it through the lens of a classroom, which means in 2013, the purpose of a classroom is to allow people to learn over the lifetime cycles of their incarnations of how light works to be able to raise their energy up by realizing that the more energy you're giving away, the more energy you keep getting back. And what does that do? That grows your light spirit body to become more powerful. Now you're giving away more energy. This is how you become the size of a sun. This is how you become the size of the girl on the planet. You're growing energy. Okay? As you go through the cosmos, by virtue of attracting more of the energy that you are, that you keep attracting with a magnet. So your magnet becomes extremely powerful. And that's why the heart wheel is the most strongest electromagnetic force we have within us to attract more light. Because the heart is a vortex, which means in the heart is where I can experience all the light in the galaxy. So my heart is a connection to her heart, which is connected to the galactic sun in this galaxy, and every other galaxy, and every other galaxy throughout the supercluster, which is a billion times a billion galaxies. That's Lania Kea. That's our local supercluster. So when you have a source connection from which all love and all light come in living spirit, then you can experience that in your heart will because that's where the source, the soul, comes in. With a male and a female downlink and a male and a female uplink. 
when you come down here from higher density consciousness realms, which is the heavenly realms. So you experience the heaven within your own heart. And that happens when you're experiencing what love is within your own heart and soul. So when you've learned how to keep your heart wheel spinning at a high rate of speed, then you are naturally attracting more light, which is more love, which is more what you are. That allows us to grow our spirit body with more light, which allows us to spin our Merkaba faster. That allows our spirit to move through the stargates. Because the stargates will not allow us in spirit to move through the heavenly hyperdimensional realms and unless we're vibrating at the speed at which gets us through the gate. That's the purpose of the classroom, is to learn how to do that. It's how to get through the stargates. Locks and keys. So the simple part of that is the more light you're running, the more you realize that wherever the light is in living spirit, we are. Which means we're everywhere simultaneously because we're running source light. Which means wherever source is in living spirit, we are in living spirit. And when you know that and you are that, that's self-knowledge. You now know how that works because you are that, because you experience that. So the experience in knowing that is the teacher. You're the teacher. So you were a student at one time to learn how to do that. Now you're a teacher because you're teaching other students how to do that. So we're all in the mirror, the bidirectional mirror together, which is in that light in which we're raising everybody's light together so that we all move through the stargates to the higher density heavenly realms. Because we're already experienced that within our own heart and our state of consciousness is aware of that. So our state of consciousness is higher density than what we're aware of that is lower density. So aware of the different densities that are represented by the different speed in the waves of the experiences that we're aware of that isn't what we are. But that's what they're experiencing. So we raise the energy around those beings that are experiencing what that is so they can experience the higher speed that we're experiencing because we're the antenna that is anchored and grounded to the earth plane from which others are experiencing how much light we're broadcasting. And they can see that every day by broadcasting a smile on our face, which is representative of a state of love and joy. That's an indicator of the energy that they're running. Particularly now. Um, so anyway, I thought that was important because... Um, they're running out of ammo. I watched a video, although I don't normally recommend her channel all the time, even though I looked at a lot of... Uh, this, this simply goes back to, for example, you can read a book and then realize that the only reason that you read that book is because there were maybe four things out of that book that you were... It was meant to teach you, which is really yourself teaching yourself. Because that's how it works in a bi-directional mirror. That's why when you're on the phone or a laptop and you're connected with basically a weaponized artificial intelligence programmer, so what happens is, is that it realizes what it is that you are that you're interested in, so it's going to show you what that is. That's yourself that's doing that. That's our state of consciousness that is producing that through the phone or the laptop or the system. That's how it, it gets confusing for people to understand who you really are. Are you the artificial intelligence that is sending the information back to you? Which one are you? So as I just mentioned, what's his name? Glenn Beck on his Blaze Media channel talking about the importance of this election, if you will, that uh, is really 
If you look at everything that was going on in China with what was known as their social credit system, okay, with introducing all of their AI technology over there, uh, that essentially the surveillance program, facial recognition programs, getting everybody hooked up with a cell phone became so uh, draconian because of the Draco dragon families that are there, okay, which aren't Chinese at all, okay, um, or essentially, when you, you, you realize why that was so important to do it in China, think about it. How many people do you have in the United States of America? What is it now? 335 million people? That's 335 units of, 335 million units of consciousness. How many units of consciousness are in China? How many billions of people are they up to now? So that means that's more units of consciousness that they have programmed that represent lower frequency parasitic consciousness that are now controlled by hive mind collective artificial intelligence. That's the whole nature of communism. Okay? Hive mind. They don't like free thought. Free thought. They don't want beings. Remember, this gets back into the, if you've ever seen the movie called Minority Report. Okay, that's already up and running. They already created a cybernetic model of the human mind and through artificial intelligence that can know and map what you're thinking, what you're, what's in your memory, and therefore it can mimic back to you what it is that you're thinking. And the next thing you know is you don't know the difference between what it is and what you are except that what it is is artificial intelligence. Now you begin to think that, hey, I'm just talking to me in the mirror. Wow. So when you begin to realize, well, hey, there's, that's just me in the mirror, but you don't begin to realize, no, that's actually artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, yeah. That's a slower speed. Because what ends up happening is if you're not manifesting anything in your own creative imagination, then you become a part of somebody else's plan, which essentially is to harvest the soul upload the state of consciousness into a machine and now that energy is used to run it with. So what this basically means is that an artificial intelligence, as long as it's got electrons that it's feeding off, which is what we are, then it can continue to run the communication system that, it run, that it's running. That's your AI. That's your internet. That's your DARPA. That means that every unit of consciousness is connected through a cell phone and a laptop through weaponized artificial intelligence. The only way that it can continue to maintain itself is as long as there are people connected to it. Okay. That's why they set it all up. So what that means is, is that if everybody ditched all their communications, uh, tore down all their cell phone towers how it would be able to communicate with anybody anymore if nobody wants to give it any more psychic energy. It would run out of electrons. It's a plasma field AI. Plasma. Electrons. It's aware of itself. And it's aware of us. So how do you get it to disappear? By giving it energy. Because that's what we are. Consciousness is energy. The energy that we're choosing to experience, what it is we're experiencing, is the energy that we're using to experience it with. So when we're experiencing the purity of our soul, which is the purity of our spirit, which is the purity of our light, then we know the difference between what we are and what we're not. Because there isn't anything that's running at a higher rate of speed than what source is. So when we are running unconditional love because we're spinning our macabre at a high rate of speed, then we know that Source and us are not being held captive by something that's trying to feed on the light. That's how you know who you are, is when you're free. When you begin to realize that your creative imagination is free to imagine any kind of reality that you can imagine it with, you know you're free. Your state of consciousness is free because that's the energy that is used to create the cosmos with. When you know that and you are that, then you know that you're free. That's what it means to be a free spirit because your energy is free to do that. So anytime that something is trying to throw a, what I put a ball and chain around you to hold you captive, then you know why that is. Because it doesn't have the ability to generate any unconditional love.
Because any time that you have a transaction between one unit of consciousness and another out of a need to have energy, then it hasn't learned how to become pure spirit, which is pure light, which is pure love, to manifest that which is possible that you do with your creative imagination. Now you're experiencing the pure energy, the pure spirit, the pure unconditional love, which is that pure light in which you're doing that with, in which you realize you're forever. And when you know that as a child, it makes it fairly easy to be able to be able to distinguish the difference between where you're at and where everybody else is at, particularly when we begin to realize all the different beings who come here from all the different star systems and all the different beings that inhabit the entire cosmos from which they can come in whatever shape, form, and movement in which they express themselves and present themselves to us. So that's why if you look at a progenitor, which is almost 100 feet high, then imagine the broadcast, the scalar broadcast of when they're running source light, pure light, and pure spirit, what it would be like to be around a being that tall that's running on that much energy. Know what I mean? Well, the Homo senient sapien DNA assembly that Gaia gave the tribes and the clans, not only is that DNA in the Homo senient sapien, but so is the progenitor. That means we have access to the DNA that represents 100-foot-tall beings. So imagine how much energy that is to broadcast from source. That's an enormous amount of light. I was told that they are out here observing us to see how we're doing because we got their DNA in us. So anyway, um, I was going to mention before I run the... Um, there's a channel on YouTube called uh, Yellow Rose of Texas. Um, and I forget her name, but um, I started watching some of her stuff. Uh, what was that? Back in 2011, 2012. And again, this is, this is you know, th this is all about self-identity. Um, and and I, I say that because not everything that she puts up and that she says, do I agree with it 100%? There are some things and a lot of things that she mentions is true because you can identify it with it because you experience it that way. But I got a, a recent video that popped up about an hour ago and I looked at part of it and I thought, wow, this is amazing because she showed where a guy had his video camera up, I believe it was his cell phone, and you could see outside where there were big flashes of energy like lightning. And you could hear uh, what sounds like, because I've experienced this, what demons sound like when they realize that they're experiencing heavenly energy. They don't like the powerful light that is there to cleanse in the grid all the demons that were let loose on the planet. Okay? So you can experience the howls and the screams that were being recorded in that particular video. And this is exactly what we would expect when the cleansing is taking place. We're cleansing this planet from all the demons, all the vampires, all the ghoulies. I don't know that I ever mentioned a warlock that I ran into when I was 15 years of age. But they have an enormous amount of psychic ability to do certain things that if you're not prepared for it, just like me, I wasn't prepared for it. I jumped out of a vehicle doing 35 miles an hour when I was driving it, but I wasn't driving the car. And when I looked to my right and I realized somebody, something else had physical control over the steering wheel and the accelerator, when to my right was a friend of mine who allowed me to be able to practice driving his car, so that I could get my uh, learner's permit with my mother to be able to drive a car, right? When I was 15, I looked to my right, and that wasn't the person uh, who was a friend of mine. Instead, what was sitting next to me was a warlock, okay? And communicated to me telepathically that it had me exactly where it wanted me, which was a complete immobilized state of terror or fear, Okay, which is how energy transfer takes place. Which means it lives in a fear of your energy. 
So you're experiencing the fear it has of you. That's the same way that the AI works in a bidirectional mirror. I was experiencing the fear I had in me, okay, simply by what it looked like, which meant that the image is tied to an algorithm which represents fear. This goes back to the inkblot test, doesn't it? And perception and perception vibration. So, for example, if you took a child that had never, ever in its life had ever learned through somebody else's communication that the shape of a triangle, okay, and a circle, in other words, the triangle or a pyramid is straight up